Welcome, massage nerds. Today we're going to be working on angel arm model, and we're, I'm going to be talking about the forearm muscles, flexors, and extensors. Give you a little bit of anatomy, physiology, some pathologies, a, a couple of pathologies, and also you know some techniques. And also for my Latin American countries, mi gente latinoamericana, estoy traduciendo todos los videos en español. Por favor, busquen los subtítulos. Okay, gracias. So here we are with, I'm going to start actually with a little bit of technique here and show you some of the muscles that we've got, that we drew for you. This is the brachioradialis right here. So this is a very tight muscle on most people. And here's the pronator teres. The pronator teres actually presses the median nerve sometimes. So a lot of times when people have pain, you know, especially massage therapists or people that are on the computers all the time, it really does start to hurt. Remember that the median nerve goes into the palmar side of the hand and the radial nerve feeds the top of the hand. And the ulnar nerve is these one and a half fingers right here, the pinky and the one next to it, radial nerve, radial nerve, and then here it splits, median and, and ulnar nerve. And right here, this muscle right here would be the flexor carpi radialis. The palmaris longus is the tall, skinny one, looks like a palm tree. It's the only one out of the nine tendons that does not go through the carpal tunnel. If you make a, you know, a, a wrist, if you fold your wrist, like you can really see that tendon pop up. The one that pops up when you flex your wrist that's the one, that's the palm, palmaris longus that it does not go through the carpal tunnel. Right here we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. And if there's a superficialis, there's one that's deeper. But we're t we didn't draw all of them because it would just make it look real messy. So we drew most of them. And then right here on the ulnar side, you've got the flexor carpi ulnaris. So the ulnaris is on the ulnar side. Radialis is on the radial side. And here the tendons go right through the carpal tunnel except for the palmaris longus, okay? So here you can ma make sure you massage all the tendons that go through here. And if you can see, her hand even starts moving, okay? I like to do a little bit of warming up of the muscles first. And the way I start is I do some skin rolling, just doing some skin rolling over all the muscles to warm them up. And I'm really getting to the fascia, remember the fascia? is that white slimy looking film over each and every muscle and encases every muscle. I can do some petrissage, you know, I can do some effleurage and I know all of us have seen that, you know, the effleurage and the petrissage. And of course, when I'm doing, uh, working on a client, I extend it all the way, you know, up to the shoulder. I don't just focus on this area, but for the sake of the video, we're just gonna go ahead and show you some of the techniques here. So when after I do some of the skin rolling to warm up the fascia, then I can go into a little bit more detail. And one of the techniques that I really like to work on for people with carpal tunnel syndrome is when they flex and extend, because you're engaging both the flexors and the extensors. And I'm gonna ask Angel to flex and extend slowly back and forth. And I'm putting pressure and I'm moving down really slowly, about one inch at a time. People that have carpal tunnel syndrome, you wanna do this technique about two or three times, and this really helps them to engage the muscles and go back a little bit further. The more pressure you put, the more that they engage those muscles and it releases them, especially because the radial and median nerve go through these muscles, and you wanna go ahead and start releasing them because that's what causes you know, the pain when they're being pinched too by the muscles. If there's not enough blood flow, if they have ischemia anywhere, you want to make sure and get to every muscle here. So she extends all the way and then she flexes. Flexing, remember, is the closing of an angle. Extension is the opening of an angle. So you want to do this two or three times for someone that has carpal tunnel. You, if you want to go a little faster the second time, but I really go very slowly and one inch strips. Now, another one that is part of this one is I'm going to have her do abduction and adduction, and she's going to tuck in her thumb. She's going to go back and forth, 
This is also very good. This is actually part of the test for carpal tunnel syndrome because if it hurts when she goes adduction, that's really pulling on the tendons that go through there. So this is very good to really get all the muscles engaged. And if your thumbs get sore, you know, you don't need to put that much pressure. But you want to do this, like I said, two or three times for each side. Okay. And then you can do one at a time. You can, you know, get one muscle at a time. Remember that you work them origin to insertion, the origins on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. This is where they originate. And then they go into the uh, ulnar side or the radial side. And you work the origin, belly, insertion. Origin, belly, insertion. Remember, you also always want to push towards the heart, the blood towards the heart. We have veins, and they have little valves that close after the blood passes. So you don't want to apply pressure towards the hand. You always want to apply away towards the heart. That way you don't damage the valves. Right here is the pronator teres. And right here at the pronator teres, the uh, median nerve goes through here. A lot of times they have a big trigger point right here. So you want to release this muscle right here so that it doesn't cause, you know, too much pain into the palm. The palmaris longus, you know, it goes all the way into the aponeurosis of the palm of the hand. So this, we just drew it up to here. But remember the tendons are long and thin and they go through the carpal tunnel and they extend in, into the palm. And they're the ones that move the, the fingers, all these muscles. You know, like I can move her fingers, you know, just by going down. See how her hand is moving? Because this is what controls your digits. The, your muscles here, flexors and extensors is what, you know, controls all your fingers. You know, so for people that are on the computer all the time, you want to make sure and work, you know, around the wrist and each and every one of these muscles right here from origin to insertion, the belly, one at a time. These are the extensors. The extensors are on the hairy part side. The flexors are on the side that have no hair. So right here, the extensor carpi radialis longus, and if you have a longus, then you have a carpus radialis brevis. Right next to that would be the extensor digitorum, and then the extensor carpi ulnaris. Ulnaris go on the ulnar side, radialis go on the radial side. Okay, and if they have trigger points, like here's a really good trigger point right there, and I just hold it from 10 to 15 seconds. I can move up like half inch at a time to the, <laughs> you feel that? I feel that one. <laughs> okay, on a scale from one to 10, what pressure would you oh say that is? Uh, it's not the pressure, uh, the pressure's good, it's about a six. A six, okay, remember. But the feel is intense. Yeah. I can feel it in my middle finger. Oh yeah, there you go. So this would be the radial nerve right there. So you wanna make sure, you can even grasp it right here. It's a good hurt, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I mean about for a massage therapist, that this one's really something you want to work out. This is actually from the Chinese massage. I really like this. Mm -hmm. And I can put more pressure. 
You can go to the origins, make sure you get all the origins. So to work on somebody that has tennis elbow, you want to go here. If they have a uh, golfer's elbow, it's on the inside, on the median side of the epicondyle, and tennis elbow is on the lateral side. You can do trigger points, you know, by holding from 8 to 15 seconds on each. I have most of my clients have trigger points in the pronator teres and then the brachioradialis. So you want to make sure and even target one muscle at a time or one trigger point at a time. Especially people that are on the computers or they play tennis or even baseball players. These techniques that I just show you, the stripping, you know, down, that's really, really good for people that are on the computer all the time that use their thumb. And when you do this, when they tuck their thumb in, tuck your thumb in, and they flex it, and like adduction and abduction, if that hurts more than likely, they're already starting to have carpal tunnel syndrome. Another technique that you can ask them is like if they grasp and they drop things, that already, you know, is they're having problems with their flexors and extensors. And one of the things that I can tell you that I've really been able to help a lot of people that have even had surgery already, and then they come in and I work on them, and they find so much more relief because it's that the, the muscles are so tight, they're so ischemic that they really cause so much pain, and people are just they just want to find relief, and the massage really helps them relieve all that pressure and it starts letting up, letting the blood flow. Remember, blood flow is what brings nutrients to the muscles. You know, we're not miracle workers. The body's the one that's the miracle worker because it brings in the blood flow and blood brings in oxygen, nutrients to the muscles, and then they start healing themselves. So this is the stripping. This is the petrissage. This is the skin rolling. And then you can do some effleurage. You really want to get to the pollicis muscle, which is right here. Also in traditional Chinese medicine, this is called the Hegu point. And you want to get in between all the metacarpals. Okay, massage nerds, so don't forget that these techniques are very good for carpal tunnel syndrome and also for musicians, for uh, gamers. I found uh, uh, one of my clients is a gamer and she really hurt her thumb and couldn't work and I really had to work the brachioradialis. Also for people that are on the computer a lot and massage therapists. Let's don't forget our arms. You know, if you're trading massages, make sure you trade massages and work all this area for massage therapists too. And I want to say a special thank you to Angel, our model, who is now moving to Fort Bragg. And you can follow her on Instagram at BRB Massage. And she's been 
just so wonderful and i want you to follow her okay and we're gonna keep tabs on you thank you angel for being so beautiful and perfect and being here i love you too <laughs> we're gonna miss you the whole crew's gonna miss you so thank you angel and so guys don't forget to follow me on instagram don't forget to subscribe hit that notifications button and all the links are below till the next time create a good day Hey, as you guys know, I'm also a massage therapist. I learned everything I know from Maria, and I'm starting my own business in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, called Battle Ready Body Work. This wonderful, talented artist, Michael, he's the one that does uh, the muscles. He made this for me, so I wanted to give him a shout out. Follow his work on Instagram at Art of Michael Carlos. I, I, I.